And about this time every Tuesday, we ask, what the heck? We speak to Nazreen Ibrahim, who is a tech communicator, also CEO of NAS Consulting International. Nazreen Ibrahim, thanks so much for joining us. Last week, we spoke about the worrying reality of deepfake videos and audio, which can be used for nefarious means, like scamming people out of money and, of course, um, a anti-democratic uh, project. But recently, there's been um, a Chinese company, Tencent Cloud, announced that they are offering a digital human production platform, otherwise dubbed by some as deep fake as a service for the small fee of 145 US dollars a 3 minute live action video sample and 100 sentences of spoken word they will deliver a bot version of you in 24 hours i see how this is going to help automated tech services or call support or what we currently see when we try and contact a bank via WhatsApp. It's an automated response. And they're offering that to now companies to deal with customers when they're calling in, say, for example, into a call center. You know, Lester, I'm all about that ethics, that ethics all the time. So if I talk about ethics, it's always the fact that it's great for customer service. And good morning, by the way, to you and everyone in the studio and the listeners. Uh, we talked last week about um, the, the technology of AI being able to mimic human, uh, the human capacity to be alive at this point. Um, but you're talking about ten cents uh, announcement for deepfake video service. I mean, one hundred forty-five dollars is a bit of money, especially on the side of the world. But if you spend it, then in as little as twenty-four hours, you could uh, birth a new digital human, as you rightly explained. What do you need? Uh, as you said, again, three minutes of live action video, 100 spoken sentences to train the model, and done. Mm. And the, the service, for all intents and purposes, as much as China may have deep fake regulation in place, which they introduced in January this year, the service is adamant that it is about being able to provide a much easier space for advertising, promotions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The Chinese government, however, have long sought to regulate deep fake content. Uh, we are un- it's unclear how much of moderation will occur um, before Tencent generates new digital humans. So again, the, with every introduction of the technology, the premise is the same. The conversation, um, the positioning, that the, the parameters that every large tech organization that has introduced technology that is developing at rapid pace day by day, you look at a chat GPT and GPT-4, which we always talk about. I know that there are other versions and upgrades coming out. And on the back of that, multiple variations around speech, text, facial recognition, um, and a host of other uh, pieces of content that you can create online are being produced daily by different companies. Mm. But the premise is that if we don't do it, someone else will and with, mm. with a far greater negative effect. Mm. But the negative effects are there as much as the positive effects are too. How do we as humans cope with this? It was interesting to read um, a piece uh, by Tech Monitor about uh, China wanting to pass the most comprehensive law on deep fakes, which they did in January this year. Uh, the new laws came into force imposing strict controls on any and all deep fake creations. But, you know, again, Lester, it's down to, and we've said this multiple times, we've talked about this multiple mm. times, it's down to humans. Mm. Do I tell people that this is a deep fake or don't I? What is my intention? That is the thing. So if I'm calling my bank and gosh, this could affect people's jobs because we know that the uh, the BPO industry, the business processing sector, the call center sector in South Africa is quite yeah. large and it employs a lot of people. If all of a sudden a service is, well, we could actually remove that human component uh, we can think of any form of word structure sentence structure and we could actually have some sort of digital call center um, mm. operative this could really affect a bpo industry which employs thousands of people not just in cape town but in other parts of this country as well and you can say that again it is a growing and worrying concern and i suppose and again, I'll go back to China wanting to introduce um, these laws against deep fakes. Uh, one of the other prominent examples that they have, of course, is the personal information protection law, 
uh, uh, what we're going to call Pup. We got Poppy. Sounds like you could make an Afrikaans drama of it. The opening line in South Africa would be like, who like it may brew if they're talking to China. <laughs> this is not the time for us to talk about that. <laughs> what we need to do is, is to understand that if, if China are, are pushing such a radical step in establishing mm. itself as a reference point, rather than following uh, the lead of other jurisdictions, mm. like most protection bills are based on the EU's general data protection regulation, mm then we've got to understand that it's always the same conversation. As quickly as technology develops, how quickly does regulation develop? And are there enough people to understand, uh, apart from software engineers, um, front-end engineers who are, dis- you know, figure out the user experience for people, people who are producing devices, what does it mean for humans on the ground? And do regulators understand this? But surely there is more than enough room for abuse as well. This, 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 this service being offered to companies as some form of um, augmentation of the legitimate business. But you can already see there's enough room for abuse here, given our conversation last week of how there have yeah. already been cases of how criminals have been using and utilizing deep fake software to scam people. Like to, um, They could mimic my voice if they have a recording of my voice, for example, to call my spouse or my parents saying, uh, this is Lester, please send me 500 rand because I'm trapped in a mall somewhere or someone has exactly. kept me hostage. There's more than enough room for abuse. Exactly. Uh, a colleague yesterday posted, um, you know, as part of a cybersecurity learning series uh, on LinkedIn, uh, the story of uh, an American woman. She's in tears. She says, I've been crying for two hours. Uh, my grandfather got a call. Um, my, uh, the, the person on the other side was apparently my brother who called my grandfather to say, I'm I think I'm going to be in a crash. Firstly, that was a bit suspicious. But in a highly emotional, emotionally vulnerable situation, who's got the time to think about the sensibility of what's being said at that moment, especially if your loved one is in danger? But also, we, I'm thinking, how, how does Tencent market this? And it's also about the language that you use. If you say deep fake on demand, deep fake has negative word association. Deep think fake means that you are... Uh, purposely, deliberately trying to fool mm. someone. But if you say, well, digital human production platform or <laughs> automated speech programming software, it's a softer side of what is making fake videos of voices and people's likeness online and on the internet. Tomato, tomato, sem- semantics, my brother, semantics. This is... Um this is the nature of how anything is advertised. You and I know this, and it will con- we will continue to be bombarded as mm-hmm. such. It's it's the idea that digital has become uh, so human that it is infused in our ability to do and think. Mm-hmm. This is the only way we can operate with the world now is through a digital component. Mm-hmm. Um, if again we look, this is a China example in the in the fact that Tencent is a massive player in that market. We look at that market because geopolitics of that nation, considering that we, we must remember that BRICS, uh, a BRICS conversation dialogue and some of these happening in August this year in South Africa. And what does it mean uh, from a perspective of all those nations coming together in terms of regulation, technology, and uh, I would say responsible digital citizenry and again, uh, from our perspective as Socially Acceptable, which is a not-for-profit tech research organization that we run, what does responsible digital citizenry mean? Mm. It means that you put the power in the hands of ordinary citizens to truly understand mm. what it means to own technology or the negative impacts against them mm. without sugarcoating the thing. Because if the interest in deep fake research is surging from January 2015, we had zero publications, to now January 20. 20, which is what the data shows from the World Economic Forum as far as they've gone, to 1,200 deep mm. fake research papers published each year, then there's, there's an interest naturally. Mm. People are swayed by the fact that technology can make them look or feel otherwise than they really and truly are. Nazreen Ibram, she's the CEO of NAS Consulting International, talks about what the heck, talking about tech communication every Tuesday around about this time. Thanks so much for joining us.